Hello, and welcome to another edition of A Lot of Help with James Law Jr. I am James Law Jr., and I'd like to help a lot. Uh, this is my show uh, where I talk to other coaches like myself and we'll find out what they do, what they're what they're all about, and hopefully you'll walk away with some tidbits for yourself or your life. This person I like very much, and we know each other from other circles. Mm-hmm. And I was, when I found out what she what she does does, I was like, I want her on the show. She is a career coach, and she also is a certified career advisor. So she's all about the career, which is what all of us deal with all the time. And she also believes in giving back, too. And I want to talk about a little bit about that and how important that is, too, in our communities. Solutions by Chandra is her is her company, and she's Chandra Gray. I'm oh, sorry, Gary. I'm not going to say Gray. Gary, That's how are you? I know, I just, I just like, I'm reading it going, I know your last name, but it went crazy. I uh, am. So. I am fine. I'm happy to be here with my big brother in my head. Yes, I'm, I'm your big brother. So I'll, t- I'll take you on. It's fine. Okay. Uh, first of all, how are you doing today? You know what? I am. It's a little chilly outside, but I am good. I am blessed. I have heat. I'm thankful. I'm so I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> yes, you're very lucky. You have heat. You're very lucky. <laughs> uh, we're finally getting fall in Los Angeles a little bit. So it's, I mean, so for us, it's in the, in the low 70s, which makes me happy. High 60s makes me happy. So Okay. Okay. I, t- I take that over 30. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you are, yes, I don't miss those days. I lived I lived in Pittsburgh. I don't miss those days. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so you're in Indiana, correct? Yes. Um, now, with your business, how long have you been in business? I have been in this capacity since 2016. I okay. stepped since 2016. I stepped away from another career in higher education and decided to do my own thing. Well, it's funny. A lot of us uh, who come to coaching or organizing or any of these kind of things usually come from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had a whole life because I mean, because we were growing up, there was no such thing. This business wasn't there was no such thing, right? Because you grew up and say, "I'll be a coach when I grow up." Now you can, um, but when we were coming up, there was no career. I mean, there, there are people that would there were advisors and counselors and like that, but there was no like this what we're doing. No, not at all. Not at all. So you had a career in education. What did you do in education? I was the um, worked in the field of career services, career development. So I was the by regional director of career services for a community college within the state. Were you always in, in, in interested in career and career placement? Is that something? Uh, nope, nope. When I graduated high school back in the day, I'm going to date myself. The movie Short Circuit was out, and I was oh, in yeah. love with Elder Barge. Okay, Elder Barge did the same theme song for the movie Short Circuit. Who's Johnny? I also, love, I also love Star Wars. So my high school guidance counselor, who I was you know, doing volunteer work in the guidance office, she says, Sean, do you plan to go to college? Yeah, because I knew I would be the first one. What do you want to do? I'm like, robotic engineer. Now, I'm going to use in proper English. I ain't had no idea what I wanted to do. I was too embarrassed to say. But I said, I knew I liked the Elder Barge. I liked robots. And that's how I picked my career. But then I realized that you don't have to work in engineering because you like computers or you like robots and stuff. And it wasn't. When I took a shop class, the only robot was an arm that did this. It didn't look like Johnny Five. <laughs> <laughs> did not. It was ugly. not at all. No. Not at all. So I that was I had like a lot of different career changes. Just I, I went change major to major, and I was working as a student worker in a career services office. And the director, she watched me. She said, "You know, Sean, you know what? What is it that you enjoy doing? What do you like?" And then after I realized that, you know, I liked organizing. I liked the business aspect. I'm I'm bossy. My brother will say I'm lovingly. I know my my brother say I'm bossy. I say I'm lovingly aggressive and have their best interest at heart. <laughs> of course, of course. So so that's how I just kind of came about it because I realized I didn't know what I enjoyed doing, what I'd like to do, or what kind of career. And I so I just fell into it. I said I wanted to help other people who didn't know, and then it kind of involved to helping people get out of jobs that no longer serve them. So I I grew up in the I think really just the Lord placed me there because this is where He wanted me to be. Well, we, we know about that. I, I, I believe that completely. Um, but that's interesting because what career, because so, we grew up people's careers, that's a that's a mixture of personal and professional. There's a little bit of personal there, too, because you're trying to find out what their strengths are, what they like, don't like, um, right. what interests them, what doesn't interest them. Um, you're dealing with their own emotions and feelings about something. Oh, okay. Should they try this? Should they go with so I mean, you deal with both, and so what are what are some of the things that you that you personally get out of um, by helping people, you know, go towards their careers? That that light bulb moment when they realize that you know what, there I can have more. I'm I'm worth more. I can actually do 
something. You know, if we if we, we're not Bill Gates, we don't have that kind of money. We weren't related to Steve Jobs. Nope. So we all have to go out and do something. If you have to work, you might as well have some type of enjoyment or some type of peace or fulfillment from what you're doing. So to have them see they have that that light bulb click on and says, you know what? I don't have to work in this job that I don't like. Why can't I explore something else? Like it's a whole they don't we know the word where it's coach, the whole mindset shift. Because if you've just only been exposed to a certain thing, that's all you know. I help them be able to to dream and see what they don't see. Because a lot of times we see just what's in front of us. Mm-hmm. What's beside us? We don't see further than that. We're not, you know, and and and, and as cult as some of our culture uh, that we have to go through, and others who in other cultures too, a lot of times it's very narrow what we're shown, saying, "Oh, you just you got to do this, and that's it," or your choice is this, and that's it. And uh, and that's true because in this area where I live, it's northern Indiana. It's a lot of refinery steel mills. So people are like, okay, you know, you're going to go to the mill, get a good job. My father worked in a mill. He says, in no way my children are going out in that mill. He goes, I work too hard, put you all through private schools so that way you all can do something else. I don't want you doing things that's going to break your back. And he actually, he was really kind of foresaw some things because a lot of the mills started shutting down. So all the people who were trained for that skill set, now they don't have anything. Yeah. I, lo- I you know, I, I always look back at my, I was, I've always had a person very driven. <laughs> person. Always been that way. But I know I come from a family of that because my, I look at my 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 father's side. My mother, my grandmother was from Louisiana, from Louisiana. Had five boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandfather was in and out, just how the hell was, whatever. So basically, she was a single mom, yeah. and he decided to come to California when the boys were preteen, teenager. So she's this woman, five boys on a train, talking about she had fried chicken and 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 jelly and pound cake. And <laughs> <laughs> And my girl told me how to make all the food. Trust me, I can make my gumbo and I can do all that stuff. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, but no, she. But when they came to, they came to LA. They lived in Watts. And for folks who don't know Watts, Nickerson Gardens, one of the roughest areas in Los Angeles. This was back in the '60s or mm-hmm. like early '60s, right before the, the riots happened. They were there when the riots happened. Mm-hmm. Um, very rough, poor, just really neighborhood. Um, and she just, and she believed she was, they were Catholic. So she was always about, you can do better. She taught her sons that I'm going to work hard because she had like three or four jobs. I give home girl credit. She was out there cleaning the rich folks' houses in Beverly Hills and as a janitor at this school. Like she kind of showed them where my father would tell me a lot of their friends didn't have that. Yeah. And so a lot of them went to jail or died. They just kind of floundered. Where all, I'm telling you, all five boys have degrees, they're successful. Um, profession, like they literally, and they showed us kids there's something different too. And I think it's, so I'm grateful to her for starting that trend of like showing us bigger because I mean, I, I, you know, my neighborhood, growing up in Inglewood, it was a rough neighborhood, and people were like, I'll just become a gang member, or I'll probably just work at the mall, or I mean, they, just, they didn't think they didn't dream big. And okay. and then now, because you do, because you work with people, adults, and like I do, I see a lot of, a lot of my clients are like, I'm 40 years old or 35 years old or 50 years old going, I now see I can do bigger, but what do I do? Isn't that interesting? I think it's just an interesting thing. It's like, so I'm sure you see that too with people, because you might work with a, you work with a wide range of ages, right? Mm-hmm. I have a, I, I have a target market, but anyone who comes to me wanting help, I'll assist them. But yeah, I do see that. They like, what else is there? Or they have what I have those, you know, she heard about the golden handcuffs where I say, I like jewelry, but I don't want to be bound to anybody. It's a form of being a slave where you think that, okay, I have this great title. I have this great money, these great benefits. I have to stay here. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. Not all money is good money, my girlies always say. Mm -hmm. And at first I'm like, you're crazy. And then I found out that she was correct. Um, I left a high paying job to do this. Um, and yeah. you know, it was a rough few years. There were some lean years. I, I can't eat ramen anymore because I ate it so much. Um, but I there were some lean years. Um, and now I'm doing fine. But it's but you know, you're right because there's there's that aspect too of I've been doing this job, I have three weeks vacation, but I hate it. It's not my passion. I'm literally dying here little by little every day. Um, and that's just like, but yeah, you can you don't have to stay until you retire, you can actually move um, and try something totally that's what you want to do right. so when, so when someone comes to you they're like Chandra I just I just I have this job I don't like it I'm getting paid well but I don't care for it I have some ideas help me 
what are some of your first things that you kind of come up with? Well, one of, well, for the, I just ask, I like to ask a lot of questions. Good. I said, so tell me, what is it? Why don't you like your job? If they say, well, it's because you know, my boss yells at me because I come in late and I take home no reams of paper. Well, no, you just trifling. No, that's, that's why you don't like it. That has nothing to do with your boss. But if they start to share that, you know, maybe say they're, they feel like maybe they're, they're drinking or they're stressed out or their blood pressure's off the roof or, yeah. you know, anxiety, it's okay. You know what? Let's do some exploration. So, like a good doctor, I'm not a doctor, right. I, and I don't even play one on the TV, yeah. I'll do different assessments. And one of them I will take, give off for them is the Myers Briggs type indicator, which is a personality assessment. Not so much they can see what career they're going to, because that's not what the tool is for, but it's to help them better learn about themselves. So they can see, okay, what, what kind of environment do you prefer to be in? How do you make decisions? Help them know more about them and then help them, you know, start that journey. If they truly want to leave, okay, where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself going? It could be something as simple as maybe just say, go and talk to your supervisor, say, you know what? Can we revisit my job description? You don't always have to leave. But if it's to the point where you're just, you got to get out, I say, you know what, I'm going to help you, help you get that strategically be able to get out. God, but it's really, point. you have to ask questions. That's a good point, though. That you could say, I want to modify my job description. Is there anything we can do? Or is there, or is there another job in the company that's more suited that I want? Um, that can happen. I mean, that's it. That totally can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I really thought that before, but that's, that's true. Um, is it too late to start? It's never too late. Right. It's never too late. You and I are kind of similar age. I was working with someone who's probably about maybe 10 years older than me. And she's like, um, they're not going to hire me because of my age. I says, you know, um, if they don't want to hire you because of your age, you don't want to be there anyway. That's, a, that's an easy way to filter out. Yes. I said, but also, too, if there's anything the pandemic has taught us is that people want folks who can who going to stay and solve problems and help them make money. So if you can bring your expertise that you have and they can and that you can speak and show and demonstrate how you can be a benefit to them, I said that's what they want. That's what they want. So, so you know, if you most of the time that's your own hang up, you think, oh, nobody's gonna hire me because I'm this years old or um I weigh this much, I have a crooked tooth. I, right. then that's that I help them kind of get past that. I said, No, you are just how you're supposed to be. I said, You are not a coupon. Don't let anybody discount you. I love a good sale, but I will be no one's coupon. Okay. I like that too. I like that. Mm -hmm. No, that's the thing. And you no, know, seriously, that's, that's true. And I, I, you know, I, I changed my life at 40 and I changed my life at 46 and I did a little changing this year. So yes, it's always, it's all, you can always make changes. Uh, it's never, it's never too late. Um, but those questions come up for people when, especially when we get older, yeah, you know, like, but again, that's you putting limitations on yourself that no one, you know, yeah, the society's tough. There's, a, I, I like what you said, because there's, my grandma's always saying, because I, you know, we're, we're God-fearing people, and I can say this on my own show if I want to, um, that I, when God is, when God's closing doors, that's a better opportunity for you, because he's, he's keeping you on the path to where you're supposed to go. That's what I was taught. Yes. So, and in Hollywood, I've done that a lot of times, when they're like, you can't get that job, or this job, I really wanted it, and I didn't get it, it's like, my aunt face was like, James, that's God closing the door, showing you that's not the right project. Right. Look at it that way. And so it's kind of just, it's narrowing it down so that your path is like, there's your path right there. Stay on the path, you know, and that's what God does. So I just, I just want to, so I just want to make sure I put that in. That's how I, that's how I run my life. So I just want to. No, you know. I, I, as well, when I walked away from higher education, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. Except for I had no, I believe I'm, I'm black. I believe in going to therapy. I had a therapist and a coach. Me too. And my one of my closest friends, I shared with them. But they're like, "How are you going to walk away from a consistent check and just go do whatever?" Sure. Because they know my life depended on it. Right. You know, I was if I had stayed in that position, I probably would not be talking to you right now. I believe it. I had to step away from my mental health and for God's like, you know, it's time. Because I used to when I used to go through stress, I say, "God, move them or move me." All the times he moved people, this time he said, child, you got to step. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah. you know, I laugh about it, but I, like I said, I've had lean years as well. and yeah. learned a lot of things, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Same here. And that's, and, kind of much, that, that, that's the message I want people to when they watch this, that no, it's, we're not saying it's like just super simple. You know, screw it. I'm, but we're saying that it's, it's worth it in the end. And I... And I always and I always believe that God has me in his hands. So 
if he said he tells you not to be worried, not to nerve, be nervous, like, well, then why am I worried? I'm like, if I'm doing, if my intention is good, I'm working towards something that's good for me. Well, he'll take care of it. Yeah. Leave it in his hands. I mean, he's going, he's going, he's going to leave me to the direction I need to go. And he has not failed me. It may not always be the answer that I want, but when I look back, thinking. Oh yeah, you did know what you were talking about. You, you got for a reason. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a natural. I like to help. But God's like, I don't need your help, sis, child. Just go sit down somewhere and be quiet. Yeah. Oh my God, it's me too. <laughs> we are related. That's me too. I, I, I know God's like, okay, James, I love you. I know you're a go-getter, but sometimes just shut up. Uh, you know, just sit back and just like, and let me do my job and you'll be yes. fine. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, you know, you know we're, we're joking, but I mean, in seriousness, I know that you like I am. I do because I, I pray every day. I pray every morning um, before I start my day. But th that's just something that I, I had to get my out of my own way. And that's a good lesson for everybody out there, too, whether you believe in God or not. Get out of your own way. Because we get in our own way. We, we will talk ourselves out of anything. Yes. Out of fear. Right? I, yes, exactly. Our fear is, I'm going to say, the underlying factor to a lot of things, even to the point where people will be so struggling and won't ask for help Pride to keep you from asking for help or a fear for, well they hurt me somebody else hurt me this person will hurt me too and that's something that helped clients overcome even to the point of deciding to work with me or not i don't beg anyone to work with me i believe the people that come across my path come for a reason but i let them know you know this is how i can be able to assist you if they choose not to i have to and in the beginning it was i, I felt like why don't they want to work with me yeah. but yeah. it just wasn't that time yeah i was well, that wasn't the person and folks out there, she brings up a good point. Um, just like anything, like a relationship of any kind, you have a right to vet and test out your coaches, therapists, doctors. Don't just settle for what they just give you or for the first person sometimes. If you don't feel right, it doesn't matter. Your rights are there. You, no matter what you feel, if you don't feel right about it, it's mm -hmm. good, the chemistry isn't there, then you're totally fine to have that. And I've had a couple... Uh, Chandra, I couple people come to me and we've had discussions and we got along great, but they're like, just your technique's not exactly for me. And I actually like that. I'm actually like, good, you'd already recognize I may not be because we don't waste all our time. You're right. like, how to get, you're not, I know myself enough to know that I need somebody who's more like this. And I'll go, I know somebody who's like that. And I'll pass on to a colleague or whatever. I say, here, try yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that's a good, but you have a right to trust me. And in my in my life, I had I've had to get other doctors because I didn't like this doctor. I've had to get other doctors. I mean, there's you, it's okay to, to to check and vet and change your mind. Yes, and I encourage people to. I just had a person who I was working with about two weeks ago. She was saying, "Well, can you tell me your success rate?" She wanted like all the analytical things, and you no know, wanted to talk to past clients. I said, "Well, you know, because of what I do, confidentiality." Yes. Says, However, if you go to my LinkedIn profile, you can see people who've given open recommendations. I said, "But also, I can send you." testimonials where they have aliases and so i sent that to her and i guess she saw that okay yeah, i do know what i'm talking about which i i appreciate that i want somebody to check me out to make sure that i'm not a charlatan or i'm not just anything because what i do is an online space and so they don't they don't physically come to see me unless they're local yeah and then yeah. i do it like a starbucks or something yeah I, luckily i have a TV show and stuff so i like always say check me out see what i'm talking about um but yes. i have because they have get lost because you have a good point. Our stuff it's confidential unless unless they allow me to release parts of what we talk about. It's all, I don't tell all my clients that it's all confidential. So I mean I don't you don't it's, don't do that. Um, I don't ask you, it is. It is. I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes. Who I hope I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher her name. So please forgive me, Miss Beth Beth Pelacchiati. Beth Pelacchiati. Beth Pelacchiati. I'll, I'll be close, close. I know it's Italian. So tell me her importance in your life. Oh, my goodness. Beth Pelciotti was the director of the office where I worked when I was 18 years old. I graduated from high school on a Friday, started working at a university on a Monday oh, wow. and moved over in the registrar's office. Then I went to the career development and placement office. She was the director. She was the lady who I mentioned who saw me, you know, working part time, going to school full time, trying to make it through changing majors and everything. She was the one that pulled me aside and talked to me and said, you know, I know you want you, you want to go to school because I'm the first in my family as well to go to college. And it's really important that you focus on something that you like, not just for the sake of because they say women should go into this field. You know, you can break the glass ceiling. What is it that you enjoy? Yeah. So she was that person. I would say she's like my my little mentor. And this is another little story about the Pelciati family. I started working. I was 18 in department. And when I was 19, one of the other part time permanent secretaries 
became ill and could no longer work. And so I was a student worker just filling in, helping out. And Beth was at the dinner table with her family and her husband, Joe Pelicciotti, and was saying, well, you know what, what about Chandra? Isn't she trying to go to school? Maybe she could do that job. And so she came to work the next day and said, Chandra, would you like to have this job permanently? I said, okay, could I still go to school? She goes, well, yeah, you can go to school. She goes, you know what? You'd be able to go to school and it wouldn't cost you very much because I was on, you know, grants and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. And so she said, I'm just going to ask you some questions because she had to do the interview. She interviewed me. I got the job. And I remember I went to Human Resources and I was they were doing like my onboarding and I would talk about insurance. I said, well, what about my father's insurance? He goes, honey, you don't have to worry about your father's insurance. You have your own insurance now. So it was because of them having a dinner table conversation that Joe thought about me because he also, again, both of them were first generation college students, worked their way through. He knew that this girl who was working these little hours could benefit from not having to depend on a scholarship to work in where you're, it, the university is paying for you to go to school. Yeah, They're giving well, you, that you can take two classes at a time. And so I'm, that's how I'm always, to this day, I'm thankful for her. Thank you, Beth and family. Like that. Yes. Um, sometimes, you know, the helping hands are always, always great. Yes. Um, what are, what are, in your practice, what are at least two things that come up rather consistently with your clients when you're trying to, when they're trying to look at careers or career changes? What are like, what are like two things that come up pretty regularly that you hear? They don't think they're worthy wow. of something else. Oh. that's a that's a big one that's more kind of like that inner work that okay i'm not this is all i can do this is this is what i've been doing and who would want me it's like a lot of hurt and rejection and then another kind of on the practical side is that okay well i've i've been looking for a job i look online because there's number one is as you know or i look on these particular sites i'm thinking okay is that all you do well yeah i say you and five eight million other people are doing the same thing so that's kind of more kind of the technique about how to look for the job. And yeah, then more yeah. of the, am I worthy to even try to go and get a different job? You know, who will hire me? And that's the part, the the technique part, I'm going to say it's the easy part, but I, what I really warms my heart is to be able to pull out of them what they don't see. So I'm like that, I'm that mirror. I try to show them this is what you can do. And this is who, this is who you are. You know, this is how you were created to be. You have choices, you have options. When they realize that they have options, then you no, know, they put on if it's my primary women, they put on their Wonder Woman cape and they stand up straighter. It's okay, you know what? This is what I will do. This is what I do not want. And they just to see that get that power. That I love that. Because I, I, I you know, the technique part. That's more like okay. Well, I, I give you the steps to try things out. You know, that's that's you're yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But it's the personal stuff because that's they have to do the work. Mm -hmm. That's where you you can only do so much. You can you can give them techniques. You can give them work problem you can do all these things you can do all these things in your toolbox but it's literally they have to click and change their view about themselves and as i found in my coaching i've been doing coaching for now as i'm looking at my coaching series right now uh eight years uh i'm certified in five different areas i've noticed that um it could be a really hard process to look at yourself you think it'd be easy it's yourself you just look at yourself but when you're forced to turn and look at yourself all the stuff from every day prior to you sitting in that chair or talking to us comes up for you. It could be anything, boyfriends, girlfriends, ex-wives, fathers, but anything that anybody's ever said to you comes up, doesn't it? It's so weird. It like, just comes up and it sticks with you in that moment when you're trying to change your, your perception of yourself. It's really interesting. It, it is. I remember I, I you talked about giving back. I went out to a grade school one time and was talking to students about careers. And this young boy said, you, you mean I can go to college? I said, well, yeah. He says, well, my mother told me I was too stupid to go. And the boy broke down and cried. And his classmates were looking. They were like getting emotional. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So yeah. just for me, just having conversation that came out of him. And when I talked to my clients, I let them know I'm not a therapist. Right. Yeah. I cannot do any mental health counseling. I do have a pastoral background where if they want to approach that, I can talk, maybe say hey, Bible is where it comfort. But no. people do, they, they, some one that person told me, you know, you're like Barbara Walters. People start talking, they just start crying and just getting things out. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I see that happen. But it's, I think because one, as coaches, we provide that safe space. They know that I'm not going to tell anybody anything unless they're going to harm themselves. And I do have to report that. But other than that, 
I'm that person they can come when they can't talk to their spouse or they can't talk to coworkers. Where that where that where that come from? Where that big pillow? Yeah. Oh yeah, well, as folks know me, at least I get emotional myself all the time. I'm always I cry, okay, I don't care, I cry, like whatever. But I and that's and it is when I hear stories like that, it's like it's it's so much more common than we even talk about. Um yeah. this these kind of throw I always say bad words aren't the words that you think they are. The bad I'm with Ruby Glover said it once and I'm like with their bad words are you're stupid, you're worthless. Those are bad words. Because mm -hmm. those, you can cuss me out. I mean, they'll, they'll go away at some point. But you never forget when someone tells you that you're not worth it. Yes. That's funny. Or you can't do that. So when somebody tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do You know, now I'm, you know, my my tourist nature, I go, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I would do it. I would do 10 of them. At least I can't do That's just how I am. Well, you know, I had a fifth grade teacher. I went to Catholic school and it was, we had to go and take, even though I'm not Catholic, we had the parents to commentate and do the readings. And sometimes I would get tongue tied as I'm speaking. And she goes, well, you can't speak. You, you know, you'll never speak in public. And I love this teacher. And that stayed with me thinking, well, I can't speak in public until I got to college and had a communications professor who looked like us. He goes, well, who told you you couldn't speak in public? I said, well, I teach. She goes, he goes, she doesn't mean anything. You can speak. He said, you always make sure you have your thoughts in mind. Speak slowly if you feel yourself kind of speeding up yeah. and just get your point across. And I'm like, well, I went from the age of 10 to nine, like 20, thinking that I couldn't speak. Wow. Yeah. And now, huh, what am I doing, my brother? Are we talking to one another? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure I have stumbled. I'm sure I've gotten my little words twisted. Yeah. But you know what? I keep on going. If anything, that's just me. That's me. Unapologetically. unapologetically. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's me also. Um, But that's, but no, that's, and I'm saying that that's, that's an example of just, you know, even the strongest of us. You hear a word or two said about you, and you never forget that. It's like so, you just can't help it. Just, it sticks with you. So it's a, and so, folks that are listening, it's always a constant process, um, kind of overcoming past words, past actions, past feelings, your past. Um, but you know, as coaches, we're here to help you unlock all that, let that go, and be whatever it is you want to be. That's kind of point. So, so I was, was going to ask you, Shadow, what what is your definition? Because I always ask coaches this. What is your definition of being a career coach? What is that for you? Being a career coach, I help you identify where you are, help you explore where you want to get to, and help become part of that bridge to get you there, to help you give you that clarity. Yeah. That's what I do. I try to help to get you where you, where you, well, it depends on our client, where you want to be aware of the Lord has said, no, he is he's designed for you to help you get there. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. We're here to help. We actually are working with you. I always like to say I work with you. Mm -hmm. um, like, not really work for you or, you, or, you, or you're like my, we work together. We're in this together to help you get there. Um, I, I tell my clients, I mean, the outcome is your business, whatever happens. My job is to show you the way, help, like I said, make a clearing, help you get away, and help encourage, coaching, encourage, we're cheerleaders, we're yes. to encourage you. We are, we are the safe space. We are the positive space. Um, we will say you can do it. Uh, we will say it's okay. You are worth it. We will we will say the opposite. And maybe right. we may not even say it in the exact words, but also we will say it in our actions. And I think that's something that I've learned the last eight years as a coach is that my job most of a lot of times is just being a light and an encouragement for them so they can kind of make that change. Yes. And and also one thing, I, I know you do this well, is I'll ask the client, you know, how do you, if you, See, if I see you kind of fearing off, how would you like me kind of get you back on course? Do you give me permission to say, hey, remember, can I do this? I always ask, can I do? And I give homework. Sometimes like, you give homework? Yeah, you give, I give homework. Yeah. I believe in homework. Yeah, and it's not like, it, yeah, you know, you have different, you know, maybe tools and exercises you have them to <laughs> do. So that way you can, um, they can just kind of go on their journey. I um, had one client <laughs> and she had a problem saying, um, no to people. Oh no, I have to do that. You know what? Unless it makes you orgasmically happy, I don't want you to do it. And she looked at me and I said, mm-hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> she learned how to say no. She was, well, you know what? I have something to gauge it against. If it's not, if it's not best for me, I can say no. And that was her breakthrough. 
And I don't, I, that just came, I didn't plan this. That just came out my mouth thinking, ooh, now I don't know if the Lord gave that to me. I don't know, but, I, <laughs> but it, it came out and it helped, it helped her. <laughs> it helped her. I like, it sounds like whatever the, the source. No, it's funny because I, you know, I, I am most comfortable who's like, okay, what can I do? What can we do? How can we get there? Um, I, I, you know, I did, I do classes and stuff. And one of my classes was about doing YouTube lives. Mm -hmm. um, and after the class, four folks are now doing lives. Okay. Because, because half of my class was, you can do it. This is why you could do it. This is how, this is how simple you can do it. Like, my point is like, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's just fear that's making you stop from doing it. And, and one of the folks that we know, Candace uh, Mack, like, she had no problem, she can, I can say her name, um, was that because she talks in every other space on earth, um, but for some reason she just never went to YouTube. She was a little afraid. And now she's, she's, been, she's done several since then. And she's so happy. And I'm like, yes, yeah, like, it's just, it's, sometimes you just need encouragement. Some folks don't have that in their lives. And, you know, some of you guys out there know this. You don't have that in your lives. I know me being in this business, I come from immigrants. I come from hardworking people who have no idea what I do. They see what I do as frivolous or like, you know, it's entertainment. Like, that's not a real job. Like, and I just have to know that, they may not support me, and they may not know what I'm doing. It's okay. I have folks, the audience that I need to give me encouragement. I get it, but I was telling you out there, we we know what it can be like to not have the encouragement, also. And so that's what coaches are here for. We're here to encourage you and be that be that person that's like, yeah, you can do that. Try that. Do why not? You know, right. as long as you don't harm yourself. Anything don't harm yourself. But it was something that's just right. like harmless. Right, and we can do that because one, we have walked in that journey. We know that we have walked in that step. So. They can see, well, you know what, Chandra and James, they do understand what I'm going through. They they click, they get it. And so I wouldn't know. I, I just I just love what I do. I love being, because you know, I, I, I work primarily with women. But just to see them that they can say, you know what, I can I can do something different. I don't have to stay here. That was that was just like the biggest thing. I don't have to do this. And in the pandemic, I'm going to really say helped me out a lot. I'm sure you maybe you've seen it as well, where people saw that, you know, I'm working for this job 80 hours a week and they, yeah, they, they, I can, I can be home with my family and do this. I can, so that, I, that it helped. It helped a lot of people have that wake up. The pandemic. So in LA, everything shut down. Yeah. So it was a reset button for all of us, so to speak. We all had, I, I had to stop and go, okay, well, uh, like what's next um, for all my businesses. And so, I'll tell you, coaching has been a little different these last couple of years, but e but equally fulfilling because a lot of folks either got let go or mm -hmm. lost their jobs or had a chance to finally slow down and go, wait a minute, what am I doing? What the, what the F am I doing? And it really did give people a chance to really look at their lives. And, they, and a lot of them started, I, got, I had a lot of business, especially, oh my God, 2021, I had so much business because folks were giving me that the vaccines came out again, back to work. I was, I was booked and busy because folks were like, I now see the other side of things. Now, now I want to do what I want to do. Now I want to do what my dream is. Like, they were tired of just working the 80-hour weeks and, like I said, drinking every single night to get over it and waiting for Friday to come, you know, and hating right. Sunday night. They were tired of that. But they had a chance to slow down. The world slowed down. Because we literally looked at death in the face. Sure did. I tell people, I, I knew, I stopped counting when I, when I got to number 15 people I knew that passed away. Yeah. And a lot of them were seniors. They couldn't, they was brought into their homes because they weren't going anywhere. But, it's you really like wow I this it, it could have been any of us but we're still here so now what decisions can I make to enjoy this life that I have been given to be fruitful to be good stewards over the life we've been given yes I agree well I had lost my cousin lost her husband he was forty years old mm. and he was in good condition died from COVID and I was like that was my that was my wake up call I'm like he is that young good shape everything and it took him down and. So all of us kind of got re regenerated. Like, okay, what are we doing? What are you doing in your life? What are you doing in your life? What are you doing in life? And we saw, we all saw, I saw a bunch of my cousins change their lives in the last couple of years. And, um, and I did too. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do media. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to start, a start a company or whatever. I just, so yeah. So it just, it was, the COVID thing was actually a blessing in disguise. Yes. Um, out of tragedy, beauty can be born. I always say all the time. Um, and great things can happen out of tragedy um it's it's just it's it's how life works sometimes and i just think that this this pandemic i a lot of clients came to me through this pandemic just because they're like okay now i'm ready to 
change my life. Now, now it's time. Now it's the time for me to do it, or you know, whatever. So, yeah, you know, sometimes you know, so I know for some people it was really hard. And I'm there for you guys, but for other people, it was a wake up call. And I and I do appreciate that. I, I had a lot of uh, organizing clients too. Like now, I, I mean, my house doesn't work for me. I need to clean it out. Like yeah, now you're home, so now you see yes. it. So mm-hmm. I was I was booked and busy with that too. It was like that was that was crazy. Also, so the the pandemic did some wonders for some of us. Um, it was it was okay, but there are a lot of coaches out there who are thriving and are helping people do stuff together. Um, so who is so you mentioned briefly earlier? Who is your you open to everybody? Of course. But who is your target market? I'll make sure everybody knows who that is. My um the the, the women, people that are drawn to me are typically women between the ages of maybe say 35 and 55. Yeah. They have um worked in a job for maybe say over 10 years and they just they're unfulfilled. They don't have a lot of maybe people to encourage them. They may be the head of the household or have a spouse or partner who's not really supportive. Well, you know, that's good money, stay there, but inside they're dying. That's one portion of it. Another portion is uh, another focus are um, women in that same demographic who have been looking for a job unsuccessfully. They haven't had it. They've been applying for jobs. They haven't had any interviews in over six months. I work with them and just to kind of help them identify, okay, what is it that you need to tweak about your process? Identify that so they can start getting interviews. Do you also do any interview training, doing resume training, doing that kind of stuff? I do mock interviews where I would actually sit down in a format like this, where I would have them dress as though you're going for an interview, sure. provide the job description, your resume, and then I'll ask the questions, allow them to answer, and then critique as we go along. And it's videotaped so that way they can see their mannerisms. If they you know, play with their hair or, or fiddle, they can be able to see those things that might be distracting. I can tell them, but once they see it themselves, they really can identify with that. Resumes, I know this is going to make people laugh, but I am a coach who I love critiquing resumes. But sometimes a client expects me to redo their resume. I don't. I don't do resumes. Okay. I will. I will outsource that. Yes. But I will look at it. It's okay. This is what you need to highlight. Adjust this. I see errors. But I did that in one portion of my career. I'm thinking I can't create something. I'm not you. So I will show you how to do it, but I will not do it for you. I know people who will know, and you have to pay them very well. Yes. Who will sit down and do it for you? But yeah, but I do. I will critique them. I'll look at a, do like a LinkedIn audit to see how their LinkedIn profile. And another one of my favorite things to do is just kind of like a little little social media snooping. If they say we not haven't gotten any jobs, well, if you stop putting them booty pics up there, you will okay, get an because yes, because yes. <laughs> you re- you represent the wherever you go, you represent that company. And if they see those things, they don't want that. So. I mean, it's your, it's, you have your priority to do that, but I would advise you not to. Yeah, we did some folks, you know, it's separate. Um, nothing's separate anymore. Sorry, kids. Yeah. Those days are over. Um, I, everything I everything seen, is linked together. I have seen people lose their careers because what they put on, no, oh, you sure. know, celebrities, but regular everyday people, what you put on Twitter and what you put on LinkedIn, people will go and they will tag your company in your comments. I've seen, I've seen four it. screenshots, so yeah. yeah. I've seen it also outside the business, too. I've seen it also. And it's like, yikes. Um, yes, that happens. Um, as we as we close, I know it's going by so fast. I said it earlier, it's going by so fast. Um, what is one thing you like to leave with people in terms of um, about careers? It's like one piece of advice or moment or word or quote or something, anything you can leave people. Careers are important, but just know that you are not defined by your career. You That does not define you. Your values define you, your beliefs. That's who you are, who you are at your core. Your career is something that you participate, you bring your skills and gifts and talents to, to get, you know, enjoyment. It's going to pay the bills and you're going to like doing it, but that's not who you are. So you are not, I, I, I my profession is a career coach, but who I am is Chandra the daughter who loves people, the sister, the aunt, the friend, that's who I am. So I want you to be in that environment that you enjoy to be able to get that income, but that doesn't define you. I like that. Um, Chandra, uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Gary, so funny. Gary, Indiana, just think of that way. So Chandra, Gary, solutions by Chandra, LLC.com is the website. Go there. It's a cute website. Go there. Check her out. See what's going on. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you, James. You have to come back. You have to come back another time on the show, of course. Um, I don't do two-hour shows like I do on my morning show. These are all like, you know, segments. 
Uh, like some folks, you guys know me. I, I'll, be, I'll be I'll be on the air for three hours, but these shows will be a little more packaged. So yes, uh, but you have to come back. You have to come back and talk to you. Um, everybody, so follow her, follow her, follow her. Um, she can she can do virtual clients anywhere. Uh, yes. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you if you think you like her style, check her out at least and and say James sent you. Uh, of course, I'm a life coach too. <laughs> you always get you always come to me at lotofhelp dot com. That's with two T's. Um, anywhere you find and this show is everywhere you want it to be audio and video on every streaming service platform you can think of from Apple to Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Deezer, and all those. Plus my YouTube channel, the granddaddy of them all, JLJ Media. Go ahead and check this show out. I also have a show on organizing the Super Organizer show, been on for eight years. Um, and then I also have extra connections. So we're trying to give back and show you that you are very important and that you can change your station in life it really you really can it's mm-hmm. just, never too old never too young to start never too old to change um and it doesn't matter what your background is we're two examples of that so if we look like you we're sure telling you you can do it too yes uh, everybody have a great day and we'll see you next time bye